Um, hi. Everybody's in that post-lunch coma right now, which is good. Uh, there's nothing like convention center roast beef to really just put you into a stupor. Um, it was a lovely introduction. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, this is me for those of you who don't listen to podcasts, who don't know who I am or why I'm here. Uh, I know the first part. I don't necessarily have a good answer for the second part. I'm John Hall. Uh, I've been writing about beer for the last 20 years uh, or so. I am the editor and now co-owner of All About Beer, which is the country's oldest beer publication. We go back to 1979. It's now a website and podcasts and events and all sorts of fun things. Uh, I also wrote a, a couple of books. The most recent one is called The Craft Brewery Cookbook, uh, which is available where fine books are sold. I do a weekly podcast called uh, Drink Beer, Think Beer. Uh, I also do another podcast called Steal This Beer. We have all sorts of stuff. Uh, those are my social media handles on the bottom. This is an old presentation. I have not updated the bird to the X. Uh, because when you do, Elon Musk wins, and then none of us wins. Um, but feel free to follow along, and then if you think something is worthwhile, it's just at all about beer as, as we're going forward. Um, so just a little bit about, I'm going to talk about why words and messaging matters when it comes to the beers that you're making, and how to get stuff out to the media. But just with a little bit of a history lesson. Um, in the late 1970s, uh, beer was on the brink of reinvention. Uh, brewery numbers were at this post-prohibition low of fewer than 90, uh, and most brands were of that single style, that pale lager, that American pale lager. Um, and it seemed like it was a really good time to start a magazine dedicated to beer. Uh, and so the, the founders of the magazine, uh, Mike and Bunny Bozak, uh, had this publishing background and Mike walked into his local liquor store one afternoon and there's a sign that said three imported beers uh, on the front door when he walked in he's like, whoa, three imported beers here in California. That's pretty cool. I should start a magazine about this beer renaissance that we're going through. And so since he had a publishing background, he started this magazine in late 1979 called All About Beer. And in order to entice people, because this was sold on a newsstand back then, uh, to entice people, he put Paul Newman on the cover uh, because he was on the Budweiser racing team. He did Formula One racing and was on the Budweiser racing team. So uh, there's a beer and health article. Uh, they featured Anchor Steam. Uh, which was then, by then, a classic beer and now a, a, a historic beer. Um, and uh, yeah, in that, in that first issue, Fritz Maytag was talking about how the beer, quote, may seem a bit bitter, uh, and that they were making about 12,000 barrels at the time, um, and that he said that they would never make over 30,000 barrels in a year, because, quote, something happens after that. You can't just turn out the kind of product we want to when you get too big. Uh, Anchor was doing about 40,000 when it closed, um, just as a, as a quick aside. Um, so the magazine continued on for a while, and then we put uh, Willie Nelson on the, the, the cover of issue three, uh, issue four, I should say. And on the very, very bottom of the penultimate page in the magazine, there is this small little blind item. We're checking out rumors of a new steam brewery located in Chino, California, called the Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. All About Beer is older than Sierra Nevada. Also, we got it terribly wrong. Uh, it wasn't a steam brewery, it's not in Chino. Chino's about 300 miles away from Chico. Um, but aside from that journalistic excellence, uh, almost from the beginning, uh, we did correct ourselves uh, later on uh, somewhere on this. It says, uh, yeah, All About Beer makes mistake. Was our, uh, was our third headline on the cover of issue number five just a couple of months later. So anyway, we've been doing this for a while. We've been chronicling beer for quite a while. I've been doing it myself for 20 years now, uh, and it's a great job. I used to cover crime and politics uh, in New Jersey, which is the same thing, crime and politics. Um, covering beer is a lot more fun, although the mornings are more difficult, as all of you professionals in the room know. So why do words matter? There's so much that you can do 
when you're creating a new beer, when you're putting out an existing beer, when you're telling the story about your small brewery that exists now in a sea among nearly 10,000 other breweries in the country, to say nothing about the countless imports that are now coming in, not just the three that Mike Bozak uh, was excited about in the beginning. So how you present your beer, aside from just the liquid in the glass, how your messaging gets out to people, how it entices people to come into your four walls to pick up a four pack, a six pack in your local package store is critically important. And doing it well helps you move beyond uh, what other folks in your space are doing. So I'm gonna talk about this from a standard press standpoint. Uh, today. And the first thing when you're putting together how you want to communicate your news is a simple press release. Um, this is, a, this is the, the easiest website that I could find up on top, the smbguide.com slash how to write an AP style press release. Um, that is the most concise URL that I could find uh, in my four and a half minutes of Googling on the Amtrak on the way up today. Um, to, to find for you guys, but it does have a standard press release. Um, press releases, for those who don't know, are a great way to put concise information together in a way to get it out to the public. And this is what they look like. Um, and again, that website is again down at the bottom. So AP style, that's Associated Press. Uh, that is still the standard in journalism these days. Uh, you're going to want your letterhead, you're going to want your company logo up on top. You all have spent a lot of time working with Glenn, you guys have spent a lot of time working uh, with great firms to put uh, uh, your branding together in a good way. Put it at the top of your press release. Get it out there. Let people see who you are visually. Um, put the date Put you know for immediate release. Contact info, name, title, phone number, and email. This is critically important. I cannot tell you how frustrated I am with so many breweries that have a simple info at, and then when I reach out and I'm saying, hey, like I'm curious about what's going on with your brewery, and the only email that you all have is info at, and then nobody gets back to me, is beyond frustrating. Have somebody dedicated in your place. If it's you, the owner, if it's a brewer, if it's an assistant brewer, if it's marketing, if it's somebody in your tap room, whoever, have a designated real person who monitors your incoming emails and knows how to farm them out the right way to get to the right person to get to a response, especially if it's media related, especially if it's public facing related, because you're going to lose business otherwise. You're going to lose attention otherwise. So have, if you're going to put out a press release, and this can also just be a blog post on your site. It doesn't have to go out to a media list. It can, but it can also just live on your site. But have a way for people who want more information, have a way for them to get in contact with you. Title and headline. If you're talking about a new beer, Brewery X releases new hazy IPA. Brewery X celebrates St. Patrick's Day in style. You know, Brewery X celebrates 10 years in business with Big Bash. Whatever it is, make sure that you have your title, your headline, a little bit more information, and then you go into writing what the news is. And city and state, I cannot tell you how important that is, especially for folks like me and other national reporters. There are 10,000 breweries in the country right now. I don't know where Brewery X is. I used to, when I first started, my first article writing about beer had something like, of the 721 breweries in the United States right now, and now it's you know 10,000, I, I don't know who you all are. So make sure that you're putting where your city and state is. And it's not just me. This also helps people in the next county over, or downstate, or further upstate, or wherever you are. It helps give them a little bit of context as to where you're going. And then you just write the news. Brewery X is proud to announce that its newest lineup, or its newest release in its Hazy IPA series is this revolutionary double dry hop Citra Mosaic Pale Ale at 5.5%. Um, you know, answer the five W's. It's the who, what, when, where, why, and then, you know, how, uh, if you're doing something cool. But make sure that you're answering those five questions. 
make sure that you're giving people that context. If it's a blog post, if it's a press release, whatever it is that's going out there, make sure that you are sharing that with people of giving them the context. Don't assume that they know what Citra and Mosaic is. Don't assume that they know that you all are hosting a St. Patrick's Day party. Don't assume that they've known that you guys have been around for 10 years, right? 10 years ago, those 21 year olds, they were 11, right? They're not at, you know, they didn't know back then, but they can know now. So make sure that you are, the, the math works out on that, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Um, sorry, you, you, you smirked, and you, you, you smirked, and like you gave me a thing, and I was like, oh, shit, I don't know. You're, you're, uh, you were all right. You were okay, right. I mean, I, 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 yeah. It was, it was funny. I've been drinking, thank you. I've been drinking Dan Suarez beer since I showed up at about 10 o'clock this morning, and so, um, <laughs> yeah, no video, please. Um, so answer those questions. Don't assume that anybody knows the information. Even these days when I'm writing articles, I'll put caveats and things that I think like, people don't know what DDH means. People don't necessarily even know what ABV means. Uh, you have to walk them through and be the educators that they need you to be in these things, if it's a press release or not. So you're gonna answer all those questions in your press release. You're gonna add your boilerplate at the bottom. If you have a company bio, it should be 100, 200 words. You know, founded in 1992, founded in 2005. Our founders believed that DDH Citra and Mosaic Pale Ale was going to be the future, and so they set out to make sure that Syracuse had the best DDH Citra and Mosaic IPA, they, they, whatever it is. Um, if you have a mission statement, awesome. If you don't, get one. Uh, it's not just for press releases, it's also to ground you and to guide you as to what you're doing these days. A mission statement can be as simple as, we're going to make good beer and do right by our neighbors. Or we're going to treat our employees well and make great beer in the process. It can just be a simple mission statement, it can be involved or not, but having something that you all as owners, as employees can look at and look at every day and say, are we meeting our mission? Are we meeting our goal as simple as it may be? Can help you make better beer, can help you stay on a right track in the face of so, so, so many obstacles these days. Having a mission statement really does help quite a bit. Um, you don't have to use pound signs to signal at the end. That was an old teletype thing. Um, uh, when things would go out over faxes, that would just mean that there's nothing that follows afterwards, um, but it's nice, it gets cute. Um, as you're writing these things, please avoid using jargon. You're having all of these conversations right around today, everybody's having real words with each other. You know, you, you speak to each other in, in a conversational way. So it is always beyond me when I get a press release that has language like this, and this is an actual quote that I got in a press release. Our multi-brand sponsorship of FIFA World Cup highlighted the quarter. I took out the brewery's name. Activated the FIFA World Cup asset for the seventh time with the most global experiential digital platform program today. I don't understand what any of this fucking means. But somebody at Anheuser-Busch <laughs> uh, was paid really, really well to write this nonsense. Nobody speaks like this in real life. Avoid the jargon. Just, just avoid it. Um, also, really, if you've opened up in the last five years, avoid superlatives and absolutes. The only, the first, the favorite, the biggest, the number one, the best. Uh, just, it's going to invite too much criticism. It's going to invite too much scrutiny. Be proud of the work that you're doing. You don't necessarily need to put qualifiers or superlatives or absolutes on top of them. Um, when you're talking about ingredients, avoid being basic. Malt backbone. I still don't know what that means, and I've used it in articles. A roasty stout. <laughs> wild, that's my favorite, wild. Like, uh, if, you're, if you're talking to White Labs about your Britannomyces, not so much. Traditional farmhouse, people don't know what traditional means, and farmhouse means that they think they're gonna be in Ulster County somewhere, and it's not what you're trying to go for. Hoppy doesn't tell me a damn thing, and this is an American IPA. That is my favorite these days, because I don't know what that means anymore. Like, I have to ask folks, like, is it, is it clear? And then I get people, no, of course it's not clear. It's like, well, that is an American IPA, I'm not quite sure. So, um, avoid being basic. Um, 
when you're talking about ingredients, and this is, I think, critically important these days when it comes to how you're communicating about your beer, use words or terms that are familiar outside of the beer space with the four main ingredients that can really drive home the flavors. And this helps, right? Because we're still at this point, 10,000 breweries in the country, 88% of the beer, 80, you know, yeah, I think it's 88, uh, something like that, of the beer is the, the macro lagers. It's, it's Bud Miller Coors still. So 12%, 13% is craft beer. Right? So people know beer, by and large, in one way, and they know, oh, it's beer that tastes like beer. But if you're making a Saison, if you're making a Stout, if you're making you know, a really beautiful beer to guard, or a triple, or a rout beer, or whatever it is, use words to describe the beers, aside from hoppy, or malty, or yeasty, whatever. Um, talk about what your water tastes like, you know? Know where your water comes from. Highlight that if it's a good water source. If it's a well water on your family property, tell people, yeah, water is the most important ingredient of beer, and it is pulled from our well 50 feet from where you're standing right now in our tap room. Or we have the best aquifers in the area, and we're pulling from that, and it's this clean water source. Talk to people about that. Talk to people about what the malt tastes like, you know? And we've all gone through like the various SRM charts and the flavors with all of that, of Cheerios and flour and rye and wheat and caramel toffee, you know, carbon black, whatever it is. And then hops these days, right? In the beginning of craft, it was, well, it's just, it's bitter. And you're gonna, you're gonna wear this bitterness on your sleeve and you're gonna choke it down and damn it, you're gonna like it kind of thing. These days, with dry hopping, with all of the various packets that all of the various hop suppliers are passing out these days, I mean, the descriptors are beyond me these days. It's, it's pineapple, but it's fresh cut pineapple on a wooden cutting board. Or it's, you know, pineapple, but it just came from a can of dole that you pulled out of the fridge. Or it's pineapple. It's just like the candy that you had as a kid. It's like, okay, cool. Use that in your descriptions, right? I, a lot of it's marketing, but a lot of it is also the power of suggestion, right? Who's been in tasting panels before where somebody smells their beer and they're like, yeah, you know, I think I'm getting like a little bit of like cherry pits or something off of this. And everybody else is like, oh yeah, no cherry pits, definitely, I'm getting that as well. Give the customers, give the people who are drinking your beer these descriptors in a positive way. It's something that they can recognize from their everyday lives, eating and drinking outside of beer to connect with your product. Uh, and same goes for yeast, right? Honey, flowers, pepper, um, you know, we really just need to stop calling bread horse blanket. Um, I, I understand it exists. Also, a lot of people don't know what bread is or who bread is, and there's confusion around it. Um, Britannomyces is awesome, like a thousand percent. Um, make sure you have the education behind it to tell people who and what bread is. Uh, when it comes to naming your beers, all the good ones are taken. Uh, sorry. Uh, there's nothing wrong with just style names. Obviously, avoid trademarks. Um, the thing that's not really talked about in the industry as much as it should be, but if you're like, oh, for Valentine's Day this year, we're going to take 5,000 pounds of Hershey Kisses, and we're going to melt them down, and we're going to combine them with our stout, and we're going to call this Hershey Kisses Stout. The Hershey Corporation is going to hear about this, they are going to have their lawyers contact your brewery and you will write them a check. And the reason that you don't hear about those breweries that have done that and writing them a check is because the paperwork that they signed saying, if we ever admit that we did this, we're going to owe you, Hershey Corporations, more money. They keep these things very, very quiet, but it is very, very lucrative for them. If somebody has a registered trademark on something outside of the beer space, and you're putting it on your beer and making money off of it, the dumbest lawyer in the room can get money out of you and will. Stop doing it. And the other thing is obviously, and I hate having to say this in 2024, always be respectful. I gave a talk at the Florida Brewers Guild last summer, and I stopped at a brewery not far from where the, the, the convention was happening. And I walked in, and the place is kind of a dump. Um, I had never been before. Um, but it was like, oh, it's, it's nearby, and I'm going to stop in. And uh, I sat down at the bar, 
And I said to the bartender, I only have time for one. Uh, what's your what's your what's your flagship? Like, what are you guys most proud of? And this dude behind the bar, who I came to find out was the owner, later on goes, Oh yeah, yeah, no, our number one. And like, you seem like you're a guy who likes beer. And I was like, Yeah, I, I, I guess so. It's kind of weird. Like, not a lot of neckties walking around. Um, in August in Florida, and he goes, uh, yeah, you know, for, for a guy like you, our number one beer, it's the Panty Dropper. And I said, what? He's like, yeah, it's a Belgian triple. And I said, uh, what? <laughs> and like, my Irish was getting up like a lot. And he was just like, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's just kind of fun, you know, like, you know, guys give it to the ladies. And I was like, I'm, what? Like, how, how on fucking earth are we in 2023 and you're serving this 10% beer that is promoting misogyny, potential, you know, sexual assaults? Like, how, and, and I just, I was stunned and I walked out. And I gave my talk, I gave this talk a couple of days later uh, when I was down there, and this guy comes rushing up to me and he's with his wife. Um, who's a co-owner, and she's crying. She's, she's saying, uh, you, know, you didn't understand, you didn't understand. And, you know, it's about our little dog. It's about our little dog that used to, used to steal underwear from us. And, and you know, like, you know, people would just drop their underwear on the floor and the little dog would run away. And I was like, uh-huh. Well, let me read the untapped description for you where you talk about seductive and you talk about being naughty and you talk about getting away with things. And she's well, it's about our dog. It's like, well, none of your marketing or branding speaks to that. That's just one example. And I'm, 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 I'm hammering this home for a reason in that in 2023, it wasn't okay. It's certainly not okay in 2024. It's never okay. <coughs> this is still a very male-dominated industry. We know that. If somebody comes up with a name where it's four dudes in a room and you all laugh like you're in middle school, Go talk to your wives, go talk to your girlfriends, go talk to customers outside that you trust and be like, hey, does this make you uncomfortable? Does this raise any red flags? And if even one of them says yes, don't do it. Because it'll hit the public. I'll write about it. Alex Kidd will get his jaws in it. And then you guys are gonna be slammed rightfully so, with criticism from the world. If it marginalizes people, it's not okay. So anyway, <laughs> uh, vague examples. If you are writing descriptions about your beer, please avoid the vague examples. These are all true uh, from beers that I've had in the past. American Pale Ale with Mosaic and Simcoe. My dad does not know what Mosaic is. My dad does not know what Simcoe is. Uh, aged in wine barrels for nine months. What kind of wine barrels? Dry hopped. I don't know what that means. The live Brent. Uh, White Labs, you know, curious. Uh, generous amounts of unique and flavorful hops. There are no unique hops. You all have access to these same hops as everybody else. There are no unique hops that exist anymore, except for maybe down in Maryland where the Mon Montesi hop came out last year and like three breweries had it. Now it's everywhere. Great beer to drink fresh. That doesn't tell me anything about it. So tell people what kind of wine barrel it is. Tell people what kind of unique and flavorful hops you're using and what the flavors are. Uh, this is a little bit better, or golden yellow wheat beer. This is Weinstephan. Uh, with its fine poured white foam, smells of cloves, and impresses consumers with its refreshing banana flavor. It's full bodied with a smooth yeast taste. It's a little bit better. Uh, but avoid that. Tell a story, right? Uh, Playdate, this is Jake's back in the day. Uh, juicy ale, notes of sun-kissed fruit, lemon, citrus, and melon. You know, they, they call back another beer uh, that you can go and get. They talk about the dates and the tea presence. Um, and it's free-spirited, unique in character. So, so tell a story with the beers that you're putting out there. If it's citrus mosaic, talk about the blueberry, talk about the pineapple, talk about the cattiness. You know, talk about the citrus that comes off of it. Um, entice people in with those ingredient words that really matter. And take smart pictures of your beers as well. Everybody's got a camera on their phone. They take better pictures than ever before. Um, if you 
the owner, the brewer, are not good at taking photos, find somebody within your organization that is. Find your shift bartender, find the packaging person, find whoever it is that has the best Instagram, personal Instagram in you know, your company and put them in charge of taking photos. Um, I can't take photos worth shit. You know, but my wife can take great photos. She takes her time with it. So everything that goes up on the All About site, usually, uh, when I'm thinking about it, she takes because they look better. Because she takes her time with it, with the lighting and the staging. And I'm just like, yeah, this is great. Dan Suarez, all right. And then, you know, throw it up there and it's, it doesn't look good. Um, put those out there. Um, with your DIY image, right? Uh, if you have a beer, that's called you know, on the lake, right? Go and take your beer to a lake and take photos of it at a lake. Show people where you think they should be drinking your beer if it's not your tap room. Show people the people in your tap room. Show off your tap room. Show off your flights. Show off you know, everything that's happening inside of your breweries. Don't be stagnant. Give people a good sense of place and a good sense of who you are in the photos that you're telling on Instagram, Facebook, and all the other social media as well. And make sure that it's going up on your blog. Make sure it's going out with those press releases as well. Um, I get this question a lot about product samples uh, and sending stuff out. Um, there are a lot of influencers these days, TikTok people, Instagram people, that kind of thing, who I'm sure call your brewery and it's like, hey, I'd love for you to send me a 12 pack and some t-shirts and some hats and I'll put you up on my, on my blog or I'll put you up on my, my social media feed. If you feel like that's worth it for you guys, great. Um, there's not a lot of ROI that actually happens with those, um, as I'm sure other breweries will tell you. But if it's somebody whose aesthetic you like or somebody who lives in your local area that has followers in your local area that you think can push things forward, that's great. Um, for places like me and other magazines that exist that do blind reviews, um, yeah, send us beer if you want to. If you want us to put it through the blind panels, if you're willing to have your stuff judged and you know written about in a you know objective way of like, hey, this is our IPA, and we're like, yeah, this is this is a really good IPA, or yeah, this is not a great IPA, that kind of thing. Um, you know, we're not going to compromise just because you're sending us stuff but you're gonna get more honest feedback and there's gonna be you know, a larger audience that you can reach. Um, speaking of that, I do have cards up here that has all of my information on it. Come grab stuff uh, before you leave so that if you wanna be in touch, um, I'm happy to talk to you about like, yeah, we're doing IPA panels or we're doing lager panels and I'd love to have your beer and love to try it and love to, to talk about it with stuff and um, if it's really good, I'll give it to April and she'll take a photo and I'll put it up. Um, Inside of your tap room, and this is, again, like sort of like using words to communicate, um, tell your story. Every time people come into your brewery, every time people come into your tap room, it is a chance to reintroduce themselves to you. So make sure that your staff knows where you all came from. Make sure they know your mission statement. Make sure they know about your beers that are up there. It is beyond me. I, I, I've been doing this again 20 years. I walk into places and I have folks where I walk in and I, I don't announce like, hey, I'm John Hall. I, you know, I, 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 after a couple of beers, I do that. But like usually, like first stop of the day, I don't do that. And I'll say to somebody, I'll be like, oh, I've never been here before. Um, can you tell me about your lager? And they're like, oh yeah, I'll pour your sample. And then they just put a sample down and walk away. It's a missed opportunity to talk about your beer. It's a missed opportunity to share who your brewer is. Because I, I've shown that I'm engaged. i am shown that like, I'm interested in what you all are doing. And I think that there's a lot of people who walk through, and I'm not talking about nine o'clock on a Friday night when you're slammed, right? I'm talking those first couple of customers of the day, those, those, those road travelers who show up you know, because they're curious about taking off another brewery you know, and, and learning something new, right? I, I, I'm never that asshole sometimes at nine o'clock on a Friday night where I'm like, yeah, so like, what's the malt bill on this Imperial Stout as there's nine people behind me just waiting to you know, have a beer? You don't do that kind of thing. But make sure that your staff knows 
everything about the beer, at least the basics, that can have a general conversation about it. It goes a long way. Create signage for your brewery. Uh, everywhere. If you're going to be doing tours every Saturday, that used to be a thing, right? Uh, make sure that there's signs up in the restroom, signs up the front door, like facing out on the window. Interested in learning more about beer? Come take a tour with our brewer. We're going to be happy to tell you all about it. Um, label your equipment. You know, I know it's the common thing these days, like, oh, we're just naming our fermenters silly names out of Quentin Tarantino movies and everything. Um, tell people what a mash tun is. Tell people what a water tun is. Tell people, you know, what a fermenter is as well. You can still do the silly names, but give them the actual names of the equipment. Otherwise, it's just big hulking stainless that the majority of the people who come through your doors don't know what it is. Um, if there are things hanging on your wall that are important to you, items of note, if you're in an old department store, if you're in an old automotive showroom, whatever, say, hey, this is our building history. Um, you know, this is the winch that they used to do to, you know, bring the dry goods up from the basement to the top that we restored. That is part of this building's history that we're proud to show off. Give people a good sense of place. And that's also if you're working with local artists as well, not even for sale, but stuff that murals on the walls or art, you know, whatever. Give them the credit and say, you know, it shows that you care about where you are. And it may be only 3% of the people who walk through your doors who spend time looking at this, but that 3% are going to leave more engaged with your brand because of the little bit of effort you put into telling the story. I get this question a lot about media relations. Um, should you have an outside PR firm? Can you do it all in-house? The, the answer is solely up to you. Uh, if you feel like uh, you can do it in-house, if you feel like you can update your blog, your website, your social media, uh, all in-house and do it quite well, great. If you feel like you're big enough where you need an outside PR firm these days, great. Uh, find somebody local to you. Find somebody within your footprint. If you're only in three counties in New York, you don't need somebody from Colorado. You don't need somebody from California. You don't need somebody with a big budget. You need a PR professional that understands your area, understands your local media, understands how to speak to the audience that is actually buying your beer. Um, bigger does not always mean better. Flashier does not always mean success. Uh, find folks who are your neighbors who also like, will be coming into your tap room like when you need them or when they want to, and it's going to forge a better relationship for you both. Uh, having somebody on retainer who's five states away who's going to make big promises, that almost never delivers. Um, PR horror stories, really quick on this whole thing. Um, who remembers a couple years ago when Sierra Nevada had to recall, I don't know, 5,000 barrels of uh, pale ale because there's glass shards in the bottle. One person remembers that, who else? Yeah, you know why? Because they were really good. They were really good at getting ahead of it. And I mean this in a complimentary way. Um, they got a bad batch of bottles from the manufacturer, a couple of shards showed up uh, in testing and they knew exactly where those bottles were. They knew exactly what accounts had them. And they put out a press release. Uh, they called all of the media as well. I got a call on like a Saturday afternoon uh, from Bill Manley, who was running uh, their press at the time. Uh, and we immediately went to press with it. I stopped everything that I was doing. They got out ahead of it. They apologized. They identified the problem. And everything was recalled. Nobody was hurt. And it went away really, really fast. And that's the way that it should be. It's not always as simple as glass shards in a bottle. Sometimes you have an owner who's an asshole. Sometimes you have something terrible that happens to you. Sometimes you have somebody who gets a hold of your social media account and says some things that uh, nobody should say in the world as well. Um, those are harder to contain. If you have somebody who is running your social accounts or is responsible for outward facing stuff. Make sure that they're responsible enough, even after four pints, that they're going to do things well. If you are an owner of a brewery who has the social media passwords, but who after four pints, even you yourself know that you can't be trusted, change the passwords and give them to somebody else. It is fun from a distance to watch sometimes 
as owners are like going after untapped reviews at two o'clock in the morning or posting memes that they think are funny at two o'clock in the morning, that can do more harm to your brand than not. Uh, avoid that at all costs. If something bad happens, uh, make sure you're getting out in front of it, make sure you're sharing information. There's a terrible story out of North Carolina where a brewer owner uh, died at the brewery about a month ago. And the brewery very smartly put up there saying, there's this terrible accident, we're cooperating with local officials, we are in shock, we haven't even started to grieve yet, we need your privacy, we'll update you when we can, we're gonna be closed for further notice. And just that simple statement helped them for the next week or so get through everything by being upfront and saying, we don't fully know everything, we're in shock, we're going to grieve, give us space, as opposed to, we're closed until further notice. Humanity goes a long way as well. Uh, so try to avoid that. Um, earned media, this is important. Uh, television, radio, websites, podcasts, know your local media. If anybody still listens to FM radio inside of the brewery and you have a favorite radio station that you listen to, make sure you know those disc jockeys. Make sure you know those program directors. It's as simple as calling them up, the radio station. You can find them in the phone book or on the website. Uh, and call them up and say, hey, I'm with Brewery X and we're down the street and we listen to you guys all the time. Can I drop some beer off at your place? Or if you like a certain television station in the morning or in the afternoon that has a roving reporter that does the goofy shit, they have their email addresses on the website. Hey, have you guys ever thought about doing a segment in a brewery? We have St. Patrick's Day coming up and we're gonna be trying to catch leprechauns at six o'clock in the morning while we're all tapping our Imperial Stout. Or hey, Oktoberfest is coming up. You know, like we're all gonna be wearing later hosen and tapping a keg. Like why don't you come over? Know your local media. Get that earned media. Be good to them and they'll be good to you uh, a, a, as well. Focus on local, focus on tropical trends, right? I mean, for those of you up in Rochester, Buffalo right now, if you're not doing something with the eclipse, I don't know what the fuck you guys are doing, because like, like everybody's gonna be out, everybody's gonna be doing something. You know, be paying attention to what is happening a couple of months in advance, if you can, and try to find a way around it. You know, when the, the King's coronation over in the UK happened, there were breweries around the US that were tapping English Miles at 9 a.m., you know, live from Buckingham Palace, or like while it was beaming in on the TVs in their room kind of thing. And it got people out, it got the royal watchers out. Pay attention to events, and then when you're doing these things, find your local media as well, and send it to me as well, and send it to other national media as well, because I'm doing roundup stories on the eclipse. I, I will do roundup stories when the next king is you know, crowned. I will do all of these things, um, but it's a great way to get people in and get attention outside of your beer to something that everybody is talking about at the same time. You know, uh, I got a, a, a note the other day from a brewery in, I want to say it's Pennsylvania, but I'm not sure, uh, that they were going to do a bring your own laptop and we're going to have a Photoshop tutorial. And it was all about Kate Middleton. Um, and it's clever, right? It's clever. Like, it, it's going to get a couple of people through the door. Um, so be thinking about what's going on. Long lead times as well. If you're in Rochester, Buffalo, and you're doing an Eclipse thing, and you send me your press release on April 7th, man, I've written that story a week ago. Like, you can't just do it a day before. You know, be thinking far ahead in advance, be putting it out on your socials, be putting it out on your blog, go from there. Um, this is also important. Words are great, words are important. Nothing you say or write can help you if the beer you make is of poor quality, infected, or just downright shitty. There is a lot of mediocre beer out on the market these days. I have been knowingly served pints of diacetyl. Uh, I've knowingly been served beer that is out of code that tastes stale. Don't do it. And I hope nobody in this room is doing it. And if you are, and you're doing it regularly, and you think it's okay because nobody's gonna notice or if it's just good enough, the world will catch up with you very, very, very fast, especially with 10,000 breweries these days. And you'll have nobody to blame when people start going to the brewery down the street from you for a better pint. <coughs> nobody to blame except you. Don't do it. 
there's no excuse for bad beer. There never was. There's less of a reason for it these days. All right, uh, make sure you have social media uh, and make sure you're updating it you know, regularly. Uh, Facebook, the audience is gonna be different. They're gonna want events, they're gonna want conversation, they're gonna want, you know, hey, it's Friday, what do you wanna drink? They're gonna want conversation, that kind of thing. Or hey, come join us on Friday as we tap our DVH Central Mosaic, et cetera. Uh, TikTok, if you have that, follow the trends. Uh, again, if you're an old person like me and not good at it, farm it out to somebody on your team uh, who does have it on their phone and knows how to use it well. Uh, you know, threads and Twitter, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, Instagram, again, take pretty pictures, tell people, hey, we're open, so-and-so's behind the bar, here's so-and-so behind the bar, and they're pouring the stout today for St. Patrick's Day. Come buy the stout from somebody. Tell the picture, tell the story through the picture, that thousand words uh, type of thing. Um, I also see a lot of breweries on LinkedIn these days as well, it's kind of weird. But if you wanna talk about business stuff of like, you know, hey, we switched yeast providers, or hey, we just changed our POS, or hey, we're looking for information about, you know, what we should be doing with branding, or like whatever it is, um, use it for that. Use it for the professional platform that it is. It's not a great place to be like, hey, so-and-so is behind the bar pouring our citrus mosaic uh, style today. It, that's not what it's for. Um, but use it to your advantage. Um, <clears throat> Again, with your tap rooms, make sure you're sharing information on the beer, including your ABV and pour size. As always, tell the story of your building, your history. Make sure that your social media is out there as well. Uh, everybody who's sitting at your bar, everybody who's sitting at tables, you know, they're on their phones. Uh, make sure that they know what your app is. Make sure they know how to engage with you. If you have a hashtag, if you have whatever, make sure it is very easy for them to find it on pretty much every piece of branding that they're going to come in contact with. If it's a menu, if it's on chalk above the board, if it's printed on your business cards, whatever it is, make sure that that's out there. Use your real estate to your advantage. And as I wrap up, I just wanna say a quick word about news. Um, I was talking about TV stations before and radio stations as well. Everybody complains about the state of the media these days and I think it's, it's, it's true by and large, but there are places that are out there that are trying that are trying to cover a local community or cover a niche industry well. Um, support them if you can. If that means a subscription, if that means just liking their page, if that means engaging with them, if it's advertising, whatever it is, the only way that we have a free and fair media is with reader and listener support. So support your local newspapers, support great magazines like BYO, you know, support All About Beer if you want to, like we have that. Um, subscribe to what Chris Shepard is doing at Beer Marketers Insights these days, or Harry Schumacher. Um, there are great industry resources that are out there that need your support so that we can keep covering all the cool shit that you all are doing. Um, and with that said, I'm just gonna say, Thanks so much. I'll, I'll answer any questions for anything that I, that I kind of missed. And then um, if you all need me, that's where you can find me. Thank you. And I have all this stuff up here, so you know, come, come grab it. But questions, comments, concerns, regrets? <laughs> no? Cool, that roast beef really puts you all under. That's. Uh, uh, either I was really thorough or just thoroughly terrible. But um, yeah, come grab some stuff. If nobody wants to ask public questions, I'll be hanging out for the next little bit. I have to drink this uh, conference beer before I go, so uh, I have a little bit of time. So uh, thanks, thanks all. <laughs>